Today we are analyzing five stocks that the investing community are buying. We're going to run through their historical performance. We're going to take a look at their dividend safety, look at their financial metrics. And as always, we will run them through our valuation model, get into our intrinsic value as well as our acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety, as well as seeing what Wall Street forecasts for this share price over the next 12 months. So let's start off with stock number one, which is Philip Morris International in the tobacco industry. 2023, well, they were down around 5.5%. We can see currently they are in the midpoint of their 52-week range. Forward PE of around 15.5, we'll compare that to their five-year average shortly, and with a yield of around 5.46%. Now, if this is one you have been holding over the last 10 years, you can see it has been very inconsistent. You would be up 15%. Now, this doesn't include those dividends reinvested, but it is still not a great return on your investment. So let's take a look at the nitty gritty, the financial metrics. Dividend safety, 64, it is safe. Market cap, 148 billion, a mega cap company. Now, in terms of recessionary metrics, for those that see a recession in 2024, they increased the dividend during the 07-09 crash. Negative 2.6%. This was above the average growth, however, of companies in the S&P 500, which was around negative 12%. Now, dividend growth, 2.4%. September 2023, regular viewers know that we advocate 4% as a minimum just to keep up in line with inflation as the US inflation rate over the last 40 years was 4% on average. Last five years, however, it has keeping up with inflation. Last 10 years, 5% slightly higher. Now, they have been increasing those dividends for the last 14 years consecutively. Now, dividend yield theory states that the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. So right now, we have a sign of reasonable valuation. But as always, we will take a look and conclude towards the end rather than look at any of these models in isolation. Forward PE, 15.1 versus the five-year average. So again, in line. And we can see, though, it is slightly lower than the consumer staples sector PE at 19.3. As always, we do focus on the free cash flow payout. The earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. And on many videos, we have shown examples where we do compare where the free cash flow shows a much truer picture. So below 85% is what we target for tobacco companies, 60% for the majority of companies. 2022, 80%. 2023, expected 104%. Now, what this signals is that essentially they are going to be paying out more in dividends in 2023 than they will generate in free cash flow. Something just to be aware of, but 2024, they are expecting to bring this down to 82%. Free cash flow per share, well, 551 in 2013, 627 in 2022. It is increasing, yes, but do understand it is very inconsistent. And do note 2023 is expected to go even lower than 2022, 627. Sales growth then, this is typical of the tobacco industry. A lot of people do argue it is a dying essential industry. 2021, 9% growth, 2022, 1%. However, 2022, 2023 apologies philip morris has had a very strong year up eight percent well above the three to seven percent and as well it is greater than what we do see when we analyze ultra group which was in fact negative so something just to note there total sales then for those that like to see the numbers 31 billion in 2013 31 again in 2022 so we can see it hasn't increased over the last 10 years and when you do take into account inflation in real numbers it is decreasing shares outstanding yes they do share buybacks returning excess cash to investor pockets but do note it is very minimal over the last 10 years from 1.62 billion to 1.55 so when we look at the ROIC, return on invested capital, personally, it is one of my favorite metrics. It shows me that management are able to effectively allocate their capital if we see numbers of 10% or more. Tobacco industry, it is typical. We see very high ROIC figures. One thing to note, though, 2022, 2023, it is a lot lower than the previous eight years. So something just to bear in mind if you do believe that this is a declining business as well as company. Operating margin, free cash flow margin, very typical of the tobacco companies, very strong margins, over 25% as the minimum we look for on the operating and over that 20% that we look for on the free cash flow. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. These show us two things, a balance sheet strength as well as dividend safety. These numbers show us the minimum number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 
We want to see three or lower for tobacco companies, 2.92 in 2022, 3.15 expected in 2023. Again, just something to keep an eye on as this is directly correlated to the dividend safety, but for now it does seem to be safe. So let's jump into the valuation for Philip Morris. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically on the channel, when we do in-depth analysis, we look at Graham's valuation, multiples valuation, the DCF model, as well as getting to our final output intrinsic value tab. But for today's episode, we'll jump straight into the intrinsic value, which for Philip Morris is the average of these three models. We do run through why we do sometimes exclude certain models when we do in-depth analysis. So for Philip Morris, $106 is the intrinsic value with the current price of around $95. We start off with a margin of safety of 10% if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. And we can see for Philip Morris, we see around a 10% margin of safety. Now, Wall Street, what do they say? Well, we can see they expect some very nice upside over the next 12 months. In fact, they see this at around $109 in that 12-month period. So in conclusion, whilst we see around a 10% margin of safety for Philip Morris at the current value, Wall Street seem around 15% upside over the next 12 months, indicating that they do believe it to be a current buy. Now moving on to the second stock that the investing community are buying, it is the Hershey Company. Now again, 2023, a very poor year, down 16%. It is trading pretty much at its 52-week low or near enough, and we do see its current yield of 2.54%, a forward PE of just below 20, and this is one that I have analyzed recently on the channel where I did explain that this was one that I was buying at its 52-week low. Now, in terms of the last 10 years, we can see it is up around 92%, but due to some issues, there have been rising cocoa production level prices. We can see it has fallen from $275 in the middle or summer of 2023, and now is trading at $187. So when we take a look, that dividend safety score, 93, it is very safe. Market cap, 38 billion, a large cap company. Dividend safety, well, in terms of the metrics of recession, they maintained it in 07, 09, pretty much flat sales, although above the average growth. And they also outperformed the S&P with a negative 30% return. Well, very a lot of things to like. Double digit growth to the dividend in July 23 at 15%, 9% over the last five years, 10% over the last 20 years, looking very positive for a dividend growth investor. And two things to note, they have increased those dividends for the last 13 years, as well as the fact they've given or paid uninterrupted dividends for the last 93 years without a reduction, a very strong metric to note there. Dividend yield theory, we can see it does look to be extremely undervalued, 2.54 versus 2.03. And when we compare the forward PE seeing at 19, it is significantly lower than that five-year average of 24. And for those that like to see the comparison to the sector PE, the consumer staples of 19.3 is pretty much bang in line with Hershey's currently. In terms of the free cash flow payout, below 60% is my personal preference. And for the large part, as well as the more recent period, it has been below that. 2023 expected 54%. It does give me faith that that dividend not only will continue to be paid, but also to see some very strong dividend increases in the near future. Free cash flow per share more than doubled over the last 10 years, 375 to 880 in 2022. And once the financial statements for 2023 does come out, they are expecting it to drop slightly lower than 2022. But don't forget, if you do subscribe and hit the bell button, you will be notified when that comes out, as we will be sure to analyze that. Sales growth, well, not too bad. We do like steady, moderate growth at 3 to 7%. The last two years have been incredibly strong, double digit. 2023 expected again to be more of the same at around 11%. And again, numerically, 7 billion to 10 billion in 2022, 11 billion expected in 2023. They also do share buybacks, reducing the shares outstanding from 227 million to 207 in 2022. ROIC then well above the 10%. It is one of those metrics that I do look at before investing in any company. And we can see it has been in the mid to high 20s for a very long time, which is very positive to see. It does give me a tick against management when I am analyzing that part. Now, operating margin above that 16% for consumer staples, above 7%, which is very positive as well due to the fact that consumer staple companies do tend to struggle with reaching these margins that we do look for. So that is a big plus in my opinion. And on top of that, they have a very strong balance sheet and we can see 1.64 years 
for them to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand, expected to go lower in 2023 and slightly lower in 2024, indicating that one, the dividend is very safe, especially when you add the fact of that free cash flow power is quite low. And then let's jump straight into the valuation. And as always, if you do click on that pinned comment below, you can grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list. So with an intrinsic value for Hershey at $238, margin of safety we start off with 10%, it looks to be a buy up to $215, at 15% up to $203, and at 20% still indicating a buy up to $191. So we see based on our estimates and judgments, and we have gone through this company in significant detail, so do check that video if you want to understand more behind the numbers, around a 20% margin of safety. What do Wall Street say? Well, we can see they see some upside up to $225 per share over the next 12 month period. So in conclusion for Hershey, we see 20% margin of safety with Wall Street expecting 20% upside over the next year. Moving on to the third stock that the investing community are buying, it is Snap On Incorporated, ticker symbol SNA. Now 2023 was a positive year, slightly lagging the S&P but not too far behind, up 22%. They are trading towards the mid to upper end of the 52 week range with a forward yield of 2.65% and we can see a forward PE of around 15. Now if this is one you have been holding over the last 10 years, you would be up around 161%. So dividend safety, 99, very safe, the highest score obtainable. Market cap, 14.8 billion. We're talking about a large cap company. Recessionary metrics, well, maintained the dividend, didn't increase, didn't cut. Below average sales, although their recession return was near the S&P with a negative 56% return. Dividend growth, very nice, 15% only a few months ago, 15% on average over the last five years and 9% over the last 20 years. A great company for those dividend growth investors. And similar to Hershey, around 13 years of dividend increases year on year and 84 years paying a dividend without a reduction. So in terms of dividend yield theory, we can see it is fairly near the five-year average, 2.65 versus 2.59. Similar can be said about the forward PE at 14.7 versus 13.9 and in comparison to the industrials it is in fact significantly lower as the industrial sits at 19.4 so free cash flow payout well 2023 it is expected to be at 35 percent and we can see over the last 10 years not once has it gone over 10 percent a very strong sign so we do expect those double digit increases to the dividend to continue as well as the free cash flow per share, it is inconsistent, but again, over the longer term, it is increasing. 553 to 11.1 in 2022. 2023 expected to go even higher to 18.4. So a very positive sign for this business. In terms of their top line, double digit increase in 2021, 5% in 2022, 6% expected in 2023. So it is very positive, only one year of negative growth. And when we look at it numerically, they have increased their top line from 3.2 billion to 4.8, expecting to go to 5 in 2023. They also buy back shares again, not very consistently and not a lot, but still positive 59.1 million to 54.2 in 2022. Now, ROIC, again, it is a common theme of these companies that we have analyzed that the investing community are buying. Very strong ROICs in the low 20s over the last three years. Margins, then, it's always positive when we see companies that have very strong margins, well above the minimums. 26% expected in 2023, 20% on the free cash flow margin in 2023 as well. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA. Absolutely fantastic. The last few years, as well as 2023 at zero, showing this has a phenomenal balance sheet. Dividend is extremely safe. So let's jump into the evaluation of things. As always, it is important to buy high quality companies at the right price. So as always, if you enjoy the content, values being provided, you're enjoying this type of content, smash the like button, hit the subscribe and bell button, and also let me know so I do know what type of content to bring out for you all. Margin of safety then at 10%, we can see it is a buy up to $291. And at 15%, we can see it's not quite there yet. So for SNA, we see around 10 to 15% margin of safety at the current trading price. In terms of what Wall Street see, well, over the next 12 months, they see the price pretty much to go in line, as we can see with our intrinsic value at around $324. So in conclusion, for SNA, we see around a 10% margin of safety or 10 to 15 based on our estimates, with Wall Street expecting 15% upside over the next 12 months.
Moving on to stock number four, we have DEO. Now, this is one that 2023 wasn't a great year. Down 20% as we can see here, and again trading towards the lower end of the 52-week range. The forward PE sitting at 17.5 with a current yield of 2.7%. We can see over the last 10 years, shareholders would really be only up around 8%, but do note the all-time high at the back end of 2021 at $220. So dividend safety is very similar to Snap-on, a very safe 99, the highest score obtainable. Market cap, 78.5 billion, a large cap company. Last recession, while well, they increased the dividend above average growth and had a near S&P return at 51 negative percent. Dividend growth, well, 5% over the last full year, 4% over the last five years and 6% over the last 20 years. So at least at a bare minimum, keeping up in line with inflation. They are also a recent dividend aristocrat, having increased their dividends for 25 years. Now, when we take a look at dividend yield theory, we see that sign of undervaluation, 2.81 versus 2.14. And similarly on the forward PE, 17.9 versus 23. Sector P, again, it is slightly lower than that 19.3 on the consumer staples. So let's take a look at the free cash flow payout. Very inconsistent, but this should highlight what I mean when I say we focus on the free cash flow. One year in 2014, in 2020, both two years we can see it is showing us that they essentially paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow, but you would be none the wiser if you focus solely on the earnings. More recent data, 2023, well, 98%. It is a bit of a worry. It means they nearly paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow. Or the other way to look at it is that pretty much most of the free cash flow they generated was paid out to the investors. And we can see in 2024, they are expecting this, however, to come down to 72%. Free cash flow per share, 46 cents in 2014, 81 cents in 2023, nearly doubled. But it is just a shame because they were increasing very rapidly before starting to come down. So do note that. However, note as well in 2024, it is expected to go back up. $1.10 is the estimation. Sales growth. Pretty strong over the more recent period. 2022, double-digit increase. 2023, again, double-digit increase. But we can see they have had three years of negative growth, although the latest period was that COVID year in 2020. And numerically, they've increased their top line by 70% over the period. 10 billion in 2014, 17 in 2023. Similar to some of the previous companies, they have also done share buybacks, reducing these shares outstanding from 2.5 billion to 2.27 in the latest year. ROIC, again, very strong, above 10%. In fact, you could go up to 12% in the consumer staples industry, 18% in the latest year, 17 in 2022. Free cash flow margin, operating margin, not much to say other than the fact that consistently very strong across the board, as well as the free cash flow margin, although it seems to be a little bit more inconsistent. Nonetheless, 11% in 2023 is a great sign. Now, net debt to EBITDA, as we can see, 2023 still much lower than the four we put here for the consumer staples. 2024, it is expected to go higher, but still it is showing that that dividend remains to be very safe, as well as it having a very strong balance sheet. So let's take a look at the valuation, see what the intrinsic value comes to and see whether or not there is a strong sign of undervaluation. So the intrinsic value at $168 with our 10% margin of safety, we see it is a buy up to $151 at 15% pretty much at the current value. So we see around 15% margin of safety for DEO. What essentially do we have here for Wall Street? Well, they see around $161 over the next 12 months. So they see around over 10% upside. So in conclusion for DEO, 15% margin of safety with around 10% upside per Wall Street and their targets. Moving on to the final company, we have DVN, Devon Energy Corporation, down 20% in 2023, again towards the lower end of the 52-week range. Forward yield of 1.74%, forward P of just under 8 And if this is one you've had in your portfolio over the last 10 years, I don't assume you would be happy with a negative 9% return. And we can see it's all-time high sitting around $72 in the more recent period. So let's take a look. Dividend safety, borderline safe, score of 41, market cap 29 billion, a large cap company. When we look at those recessionary metrics, maintain the dividend below average growth and a near S&P return. So what about the dividend growth? Well, we can see some astronomical high numbers here. 85% on average over the last five years, 22% over the last 20 years. And we can see they have been increasing those dividends for the last five years. As we can note here, they did cut the dividend in 2015 as well as 2016 before increasing it very rapidly. 
In terms of dividend yield theory, well, we can see that sign of undervaluation, 6.25 versus 4.25. Similarly, on the forward PE, 7.8 versus 8.6. And when we compare it to the sector P for energy at 12.4, Devon Energy is sitting comfortably lower. So let's take a look at the free cash flow payout. We can see it is very volatile due to the cyclical nature of the industry. 2022 at 99%, 2023 feeling a bit better as it has come down to around 77%. So we can already see purely based off the free cash flow payout and how high it is, why we did see that borderline safe dividend score. Free cash flow, well, it has gone from negative 329 to 523 and is expected in the 2023 annual accounts to come down to 447. But as always, do just understand the type of companies you're investing in. Are they mature companies? Are they cyclical companies? Are they rapidly growing companies? And then you have a better idea of whether or not these numbers and figures seem to be reasonable. Sales growth, again, it does show the cyclical nature here, a few years of negative growth, followed by positive and so on. 2023, however, do know it is expected to come down negative 21%. Now, total sales, we can see 10 billion in 2013, 19 in 2022. But again, it does very clearly show that cyclical nature. Shares outstanding, well, they've increased the shares 400 million in 2013 to 650 in 2022. So your point as a shareholder has been diluted. ROIC, again, very cyclical, 41% in 2022, 25% in 2023. The last three years have been fairly positive, but there are quite a few metrics just to keep an eye on as a shareholder or a potential investor. Operating margin, again, this isn't something that should surprise you. 42% in 2022, 33 in 2023. At least the last three years have been fairly positive, and the same can be said when analyzing the free cash flow margin on screen. Net debt to EBITDA, at least this is fairly positive, 0.58 in 2022, well below the 1.5 we look for all producers, and 0.77 expected in 2023, a similar figure expected in 2024. So let's take a look at the valuation. As always, if you're enjoying the content, values being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you have these videos delivered to your doorstep. And don't forget, you can click on that pinned comment below to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list in the stock valuation model. So at a 10% margin of safety, we see Devon Energy buy up to $52, at 15% up to $49, and at 20% we see pretty much near the current trading price. In terms of what Wall Street see, well, they expect the price over the next 12 months to hit around $56. So we can see they expect around 20% upside. So in conclusion, for Devon Energy, we see around 20% margin of safety based on our estimates and judgments, with Wall Street forecasting 20% upside over the next 12-month period. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you been adding any of these shares? Are you looking to sell? Or as always, do let me know if you enjoyed this type of content so I can bring out very similar type. As always, have a great day. Don't forget to smash that like button. Catch you all on the next episode and take care.